wine in the country. Sounds insane. Throw your polluted water. Feel your acid rain. Put down your pores and don't plant them back again. Say put the world back together. Nationalities talking, fear and hate. Said, let's have a war, go them all away. Said, that's stupid. That's really stupid. I said, I said, put the world back together. Put the world back together. Put the world back together. Yeah, can sing, everybody sing, everybody sing. Harris, everybody. Yeah. James Cornbread Harris. I was lucky enough to be on the same stage with this lady. Give her a round of applause. Door sign. Yeah. And she didn't she didn't stop there. She said, Well, I'm gonna raise me some kids. I think I'll raise me a boy. Gary. Gary Hines. My son. Yeah, your son, right. See, I, I knew I was getting close. <laughs> yeah. And, and Gary Hines is the head of the Sounds of Blackness. Have you ever heard of him? This man yes. is the leader of that. So, I know. So we're, we're having a, a party today, and you're kicking it off. So how do you like that?
Oh my God. Do you know what I want to know about you, though? I understand you didn't originally come from Minneapolis. You came through Chicago. Chicago is that right? Chicago, Illinois. And tell me that story. I'm going to move yeah. that towards you. Okay, Chicago, Chicago, Illinois. Did you come from a musical family, Cornbread? My family history is a, is a mystery to me. Uh, uh, I remember somebody said they were my mother and father. I don't remember it, but my grandparents told me I had a mother and father. So I believe him, you know. Oh. Yeah, I believe him. What the heck? So, because Superman believed that that was his father and mother too, you know. Yeah, right. So. Uh, okay. Yeah, but anyway, I uh, they decided that they loved each other so much until one couldn't live without the other one. Have you ever been into that kind of shape? I don't know. I that bet it, you write songs about stuff like that, don't I do. you? I bet he knew he did. I knew he did. <laughs> All right. So, so you so, found your way from Chicago to Minneapolis. Can you remember what year? Well, that, I have a very poor memory. I, I, I like not knowing stuff. I mean, well, I, that's I one quit. way of staying in the moment. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, I, I looked at these fine people and, and it came to me. Otherwise, I would have, you know, never. Did you play mostly kind of blues kind of music no. when you when you first came up? What did you play? I played country western music. Uh -huh. That was All my right. thing. Then uh, oh, I forget the, the the top king of the of the country western was an older guy, and he had a son that decided he was going to play western music. I don't know what that stuff was he played. I I just whoa. I don't know. He didn't do his father justice. Well, uh, did he end up, were they from the Twin Cities as well? Oh, no. They uh, weren't? Okay. No, I'm up against the whole world here. I'm, you know, I, I'm not just up against the Twin City people. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Gary can tell you about that. I mean, if you get you any kind of a thing going, you got to branch out, you know. You got to go to St. Paul or you got to go... Oh. <laughs> Oh, that's where I am? No. So, I'm, I'm you're in Minneapolis. In... What what kind of country tunes did you... I mean, give me a... Show me a style. Show oh, me a style. Oh, okay. Is that what? Hank Williams? Is that Were you talking Thank about you. Hank Williams? Yeah, yeah. See, there, I got memory people in the room here. And it's my brother, Ricky. Ricky, so, thank okay, you, Ricky. Oh, okay, okay. Thank you, Ricky. Definitely, that's who it was. Here. That's who it was. Well, play me a little uh, country. Just a little excerpt there. Uh, country girl, right there. Right, what was that? Did you write it? No. Did, you didn't write those? No, that's a, country, that's a country tune. No, I, I grew up on jazz. I didn't know the country. You didn't library. know they had country no. music? Well, yes, I knew oh, they yeah. had country music. But well, that I station, didn't... no, the station that you're on, now that you do, you are on the radio, right? Yes. Yeah, okay. Saturday, they got bluegrass. Bluegrass. Yep. They got country. They got old time. They got. Irish, oh. Irish music, Celtic nation. Yeah, yeah. That's very Celtic. good. I, I mean, like how his descriptions of life are through music. Is, hey, is, see? Isn't that perfect? He just happens to live his music. That's all right. He lives man. your stories. So, so I, but I, wait a minute, though. You, you have this name about being into jazz and blues. When did that happen? Okay. I, I took my country songs uh, over on the Rondo Avenue... Selby Avenue, Grand Avenue, Concordia Avenue, and they said, what in the heck are you doing? What kind of music is that? Really? Yeah, really. I said, well, well what kind of music? He said, come over here and listen to the jukebox. <laughs> so I went over and listened to the jukebox, and the people, and, and they were saying stuff like, I get so tired. 
I can hardly stand up. Well, yeah, that's true. <laughs> Get so tired. I can hardly stand up. I know that feeling. You know what? I know that feeling. You know the feeling? I do. Yeah, it makes you want to give it up. So, so I put that in my country songs and they you? said, hey, that's what we're talking about. I said, okay. So I'm playing the blues, right? Yeah. So I get a bunch of people together about 17 different times. I got people together and we played that. And uh, I started out the night with something similar to that. The jazz people come along and said, why don't you put... <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. Why don't you put that in there? Uh, I said, okay, I'll do that. I said, well, some of the ideas that this group has given me... Uh, uh, Time through, come on with me. make sure that everybody could see what you were doing up here. Oh. So that was one of your segues into playing more jazz More jazz, blues. yeah, more sure. jazz. Can you remember a club that you might have played? I know that there was a Murray's Club and there was a... Murray's, yeah. Uh, yeah, and it wasn't in the downtown area. It was more in the northern suburbs. There was a Sherwood. Northern things. Yeah. Can you remember any of the names of the clubs you well, might have played? I only played the Sherwood once, I don't know. Okay. But uh, let's see. Nikki's Cafe. That was my big hold out thing. Okay, and yeah. Nikki's was located where? Second Street and First Avenue, down by the Fur Place, down there, Ribnick or something? Yes. Yeah, and uh, I played down there many years, and uh, I, I think I got a hold of one or two of these guys that have been with me ever since. Uh, so I did Nikki's. Oh, I did a place at the time on the lake, right there at the lake, called Blowing Pasta Bar. Was it? Oh, yes, it was by, sure. It was it right moved. by the right. lake. It was right. right by the lake. Right, in Lower Yeah, Park. so they right. decided that they couldn't stay there because of both of the places. The landlords decided to raise the rent and not fix the place. Ah. Because they had bigger money people waiting on the side to come in there and pay more rent money, pay higher prices. But that place moved, right? So they moved. They said, hey, we can't afford this. So what are we going to do? Well, we're going to go over. We've got an old raggedy building over at the campus that we can use. Oh, a warehouse? Yeah, OK. So he went over there and renovated the warehouse in, in three or four Three or four months. It's a really cool place. Oh, it's the Loring a, Pasta Bar in Dinky Town. It's in Dinky Town, USA. It's great. It's got a couple of different levels and music every night, I believe. Mm -hmm. It's your regular gig on Fridays. Yes, so there you, you go. Six to nine? It used to be a drugstore. Didn't they keep some of that decor too, seems to me? Yeah. So you, do you have a favorite place when you think back in your history, do you have a favorite place you played or a favorite concert that you remember? I remember playing Upper Peninsula in Wisconsin on the mountain. I remember playing Duluth Festival a few years. I remember playing the State Fair at one of those little side places 
They have all them around the sure. playgrounds. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Uh, I, I said, have you got a phone book here? <laughs> yeah, right, okay. <laughs> well, we can get some of those places because I know some of them. They're in a wonderful book called Joined from the Hip that was put out on the history of jazz. If you don't own it, I think that's the, is it Joined from the Hip? Kevin's not in here, is he? Uh, but anyway, you can get it on Amazon, and it is through the Minnesota Historical Society as well. But it talks about jazz in the beginning of, oh gosh, I think it goes back to the early 1900s and how jazz players would come on boats to St. Paul mm -hmm. in that Shepherd uh, Road area and yeah. Jackson Street, yeah. and you would get an indoctrination of what New Orleans jazz was like by the people the musicians who were playing on the boats and coming to that area. And so people would come to that, uh, some musicians that lived here in the Twin Cities. That made Harriet Island the, famous. Right, exactly. It became very, right, Harriet Island very yeah. famous in that area. But um, we had people like uh, Dizzy that came, Louis Armstrong. And, and in that day, you played, some of these boats that would come up the Mississippi River were also passenger boats. And so you would hear them playing um, the standard at the time. We call it jazz, now we call them jazz standards, but it was the popular music at the time. And it, trying to please the people instead of it segueing into more jazz. As a matter of fact, the history of jazz is jazz was spelled J-A-S-S -S, and it was considered a bad word. Yeah. Because that meant that you were kind of rambunctious and wanting you to get out there with your ja jazzing it up kind of thing. But it really got a soft pedal as years went on, I'd say in the mm -hmm. 30s and the 40s, and uh, do you remember when you came to the Twin Cities at all? What year? Were you in the 50s, 30, 40s, 50s? I can't recall what I read last night. Oh, you read stuff about me? I read stuff about you. Oh, no. Man. And Augie Garcia, right? Augie, oh, man. River Road Club, Mendota, River, Minnesota. There you go, yeah, River Mendota, Boat yeah. Club, Mendota. Oh, man, what, five or six years? We played three, four nights out, out there. We had to go through the Hall Brothers place up on the hill. Yes, I remember it. Uh, to the parking lot to get to where we played at. And you were there a long time. You packed the place, right? Yeah, we, we packed it. Yeah. And didn't it change hands? And then all of a sudden, uh, that kind of music wasn't played there anymore. Is, is well, that? Well, it it changed a, a hand or two hands. People got two hands, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the, uh, a lady lost a hand in a life. Uh, was a little gangster the, action going on over there? Well, no. She ran her car into the river. Ooh. And uh, we never could get her out in time or anything. And then the news passed around Mendota, and then they decided to shut the place down. Mm. So Augie and I and the rest of the group went up and down West 7th Street playing for the gangsters. Kit Can and the boys. That got to be really a nice thing. <laughs> that was, it did. I mean, you, you got $100 tips and stuff. Sure. Oh, yeah. yeah well, that, that's you know. That's got to be fixed. You know. He's taking care of his friends still. Yeah. Yeah, and I read that they, you wouldn't know that a gangster like Kid Can was out in the area coming oh, no. to hear the musicians. They dressed no. so well. They, in their finery, they were great tippers. Yeah. Um, but I know that once I get to the Cliff Brunzel part of the story on the um, radio documentary that you're going to be hearing, he played for gangsters as well, and he would play a certain tune for a certain gangster, and there are some wild stories that his daughters are going to be able to tell us. So. <laughs> but let's keep it at you now. Yeah, okay. And uh, I know you I'm have here. a couple of kids, and they were musical too, right? Oh, I have a child named Jimmy Jam. I wonder if everybody heard of him. Yeah, I'm not oh, sure. Oh, you did? Okay, good. I'll tell him you applauded for his name being said. <laughs> uh, well, he and I are the same age and came up through the ranks together. So I, I we were very good friends back in the day. You could have been my daughter. No, no, no. Well, I think I was married. I'll... No, let's don't go there. That's no. Uh, uh. Anyway, I... <laughs> Yeah, he was kind of talented. Let's go back to that. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. how about you have a daughter too, right? And did she was she equally as talented? My daughter was one of my daughters was very talented, sang in church. Yeah, I got another daughter. 
her talent is being a bartender. She's a very good bartender. Ooh. One of the best. Okie doke. Yep. So an she, too, uh, an actress a little bit. Okay. She played in a play that I uh, played in. Uh, interview with Paul Robeson. Oh. Yeah, yeah. I think that's in that book too. And I was, reading. yeah, I was uh, Paul Robeson's piano player in mm. the play. And I did it with a fella named Paul, which was kind of funny, but uh, you know, <laughs> Paul Maybon, sure. bass singer, just extraordinary. Uh, I don't know what happened to him. Uh, we were supposed to play a gig after we finished playing at um, Far Wisconsin. Mabel Tainter? No, before Mabel Tainter. Where'd you get that from? That was the theater you used to do that. Yeah, yeah, okay, I played there. Played yeah, there a of times yeah we were playing. supposed to p put the play in there, and he didn't show up. But I, I could tell that when we were, Milwaukee, where we first were, I could tell when we were playing Milwaukee that his head was getting bigger and bigger and bigger. I mean, when we went into Milwaukee, his head was this size. <laughs> and time we ran that play, continuous, three times, continued. The, the people said, oh no, we can't let you go now. Can you stay and play this? And we couldn't stay to play it this last time because we had to go to the Mabel Tainer Theater and play the play. But by the time we left there, his head was this big, you see? But people on the radio can't see what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah. He got a little big-headed about the popularity. Is that yes, what you're trying did. to say? Yes, he okay. did. Yes, he did. That should describe it. Yeah, it did. It just uh, ruined uh, everything we had going. I mean, three runs at a play, uh, continuous, one right after another. It was just beautiful. And, and like I say, the man's talented. I hate to see him throw it away like that, but... I, I want to know what, uh, if you have some CDs that you've recorded. You don't have to have them with you. I, I want you to tell our listeners. I could have left them home. Well, I want them afterwards. I just want you to brag about yourself. Brag? Uh, what or have I got to brag, brag about? I got, uh, I got, the only thing I got to brag about is how blessed I am. That's what I got to brag about. The talent that God gave me and that I get to use it to entertain people in the world. And they like it, and they say, oh, you gotta be on my show. <laughs> Twice now, See? for yeah. us. Twice now for us, once at WCCR. Yeah. Um, I am wondering if you would mind saying your age. Seeing my age? Yeah. Well, I'm trying to get to 88. I'm 86 now, so. <laughs> April 23rd, I'll be 87, and then I'll be, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Well, never mind. Exactly. I think it's, I think there's a It'll 80. be time for a new CD when it's 88, right? <laughs> How about some more music, and we can maybe come back to some stories at another time. James Cornbread Harris, the yep. second, are you? I'm the second. Jimmy the Jam second. is the third. All right. But he's not cornbread, so. <laughs> I don't think anybody could be cornbread, right? Ladies and gentlemen, right. James Cornbread Harris, the second. For some more music. Well, well, well. You got dead air space on your program. You, what do you do? Chop the dead air space out and then you... I don't know, I might keep all your quips. Piece it together. <laughs> <laughs> How long of dead silence are you allowed on your... <laughs> Not that long. Not, oh, thank you, thank you. Appreciate it. Oh, they asked me, uh, how come you got the name Cornbread? That's right. I, w I was uh, um, called Huckleberry Finn before that. Yeah, I was. I went to uh, uh, a day camp. Uh, 
Phyllis Wheatley, and I was running late. My, my grandparents by that time had taken me in because I lived in many foster homes in Detroit, Michigan, Colo Denver, Colorado, uh, where they make the cars, uh, that, that Detroit, okay. Uh, Omaha, Nebraska, I you know, lived all over the place in different kind of homes. So I didn't get stuck with this, this is the way you're supposed to be raised, this is the way life is and that. I learned all kind of different ways, which is it's putting me in good stead right now, you know, because uh, I'm not trapped in a certain way of, you gotta do it this way, you gotta do it that way. So that's why I was able to get my country tunes into the blues, because I could change it over. See, don't get too rigid in your life. I'm, and I'm telling you young folks, younger than me, uh, that don't get rigid at 86 years old, 87 years old, 88 years old, don't get rigid. Always keep an open mind. So I kept an open mind when I had a different group than this. I had a different group. I had a drummer that decided, uh, well, why don't you write some more songs, Cornbread? I only got 50 now, so I got a whole lot way to go yet. Uh, I said, well, uh, what should I write? And uh, uh, he said, well, I know a song that, that we could put together. He said, I, I got the beginning of it. Oh, you got the beginning of it. I said, what's the beginning? Put your earplugs in. Put your earplugs in, yeah. Cornbread in the morning. Cornbread every night. Cornbread in the forenoon. What kind of song is that? <laughs> I said, well, let me, let, I, I'll add to the song. Everything will be all right. Said cornbread. 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 Love that good cornbread. <laughs> what? God, I don't even know my own word. <laughs> Try to say it anyway. Uh-huh. I got it coming up, hang in there. <laughs> Collard greens and cornbread, chitlins and cornbread, lobster tail and cornbread, black eyed peas and cornbread, oxtails and cornbread, hog malls and cornbread, onion rings and cornbread, turnip greens and cornbread, baked beans and cornbread, caviar. Cornbread, fried okra, cornbread, fried rice and cornbread, pasta and cornbread, how many grits and cornbread, fried chick, cornbread, big feet and cornbread, pork chops and cornbread, monkey hipster, cornbread. Inspectors like cornbread, nurses like cornbread, scientists like cornbread, doctors like cornbread, bartenders like cornbread, cab drivers like cornbread, truck drivers like cornbread, mailmen like cornbread, salespeople like cornbread, nutrition and cornbread.
Presbyterians like cornbread. <laughs> Other people like cornbread. Lutheran folks like cornbread. Catholic people like cornbread. Methodists like cornbread. Seventh day like cornbread. Christian science like cornbread. Apostolic like cornbread. Beatniks like cornbread. Hip cats like cornbread. Buddhists like cornbread. Jewish folks like cornbread. from cornbread, big thighs from cornbread, swinging hips from cornbread, sweet lips from cornbread, red heads like cornbread, brunette ticks like cornbread, black hair goes with cornbread, little girls like cornbread, big girls like cornbread, cornbread.
said cornbread. Cornbread. You know I love that good corn. Yeah, that's me. I want you to introduce this great band you have with you, please. Oh, yes, I got the great band. This is, come this, on. These guys. Come on, come on. I think I remember who you are. Well, let's, maybe do you want them to introduce themselves? That would be really nice. That would take a big strain uh, off of me. <laughs> well, you knew your name. That was good. I thought you knew your name for, for that whole song. And you are. Uh, my name's Dave, Dave Hofgren. But you got a nickname. Uh, I got a bunch of nicknames. <laughs> Which one? Why Tsunami? Which? I have no idea. He's an unstoppable force of nature, okay. True? Okay. And? Uh, this is it. Okay. Can you step forward? Um, yes. There we go. Uh, my name is Scott Sowell, and I've been with Cornbread since uh, February. 18th, 1995. Wow. Oh, <laughs> and I'm Doug Hill. Dig it. Dig it. Dig it. I'm Doug. Yeah. <laughs> Glenn Graham. How long have you been with him? Oh, I don't know. For 16 years, probably. Oh, just like nothing at all. <laughs> Please put your hands together for this wonderful group of people. We're going to make a little transition and get to cornbread some nosh and thank you so much for doing this uh, do you mind and uh, do you mind getting some uh, uh some food and beverage and maybe coming back from some stories or or oh. did you have another one you wanted to play yeah i got another one i want to play i, I wrote 50 songs uh, if I could play uh, we don't one have of them. time for 50 songs though you don't want all 50 of them no how about just one more quickie oh that's what she Oh, oh I, I remember running uh, the hip swinger guy off the stage uh, at the two uh, oh, big time halls where they play music at. Uh, what was that guy's name? Elvis. Oh, there you go. See, I got all this brain help off here. Oh, yeah, Elvis. And, and uh, so uh, uh, the colonel, I guess that was his uh, lead-in guy, was, you know, looking out for him and everything. So old Swivel Hips uh, was supposed to come on the stand, right? And then uh, Augie, see, would, you, you want to dance with one? What's the dance with Bermuda shorts on top of the piano? Bring my shorts. You won't. You didn't bring your shorts. Okay. Okay. We'll have to save that for the video. Uh, so I wrote a couple rock and roll things, and this is one that I wrote. Make a street corner look like a candy store, candy man, candy man, a candy man. If you want my love, run as fast as you can. All you little girls, run as fast as you can. Find yourself a loving candy man, a candy man. You can. Out of little girls, don't be bubble gum, no more. They want a song with a beat, a little something more. Candy man, candy man, candy man. My love, run as fast as you can.
fast as you can. All you little girls run as fast as you can. Find yourself a loving candy man, candy man. Best you can. Say, ooh, sugar. Say, ooh, sugar. Say, ooh, sugar. One more time. Say, ooh, sugar. Thank you so much. Isn't this so much fun? I don't know if I like the music better or the stories. And I got them all. I love you for coming and doing this. Thank you so, so much. Wee! 
come out and said she don't live here anymore and it's early I said it's early I said it's early in the morning and I ain't got nothing but the boot everybody sing everybody sing it's early in the morning early in the morning early in the morning 
morning, early in the morning, early in the morning, and I ain't got one more time, one more time, one more time. Said it's early in the morning, early in the morning, early in the morning, early in the morning. I said it's early in the morning and I ain't got nothing but the blues. 